Hello everybody, this is Tenpin for Tenpin Plays, and we are playing Ask Me Anything. That's right, it's time to ask me anything. I posted up a little journal on for Affinity saying, Hey guys, if you want to ask a Let's Player anything, here is the chance. And when I said anything, I meant anything, but apparently you guys decided you were going to stick around my little um, realm of work. So, let's start off the festivities with a question, shall we? Kalenko asks, just in time here, what inspired you to do Let's Plays? Well, Kalenko, the um, truth is, it all started out with a game swap. My friend Silverwing's Dragon, um, Flying Fire on Fur Affinity, actually posted up in a journal, Hey, if you have the Wolf Among Us, would you be willing to trade it for Amnesia Dark Descent? I was the lucky guy who got to trade her that game. She later said, after the trade, she says, You know, you should really let's play this too. You should really try to let's play Amnesia. It's really a, a fun little horror game. Not knowing my aversion to said games, she decided to kind of keep egging me on. She finally told me, hey, you're really funny. Little did I know she was talking about my face and not my um, comedy. But I um, have been doing it, that was last November, and I've been doing it ever since. And having a blast all along. Next question. Confession time, I scavenged this from my last TMI Tuesday, but it's such a good question, I have to answer it again on this video. Eric asks, What's the worst game you've ever tried to Let's Play, and what made it so bad? Well, that's an interesting question, to be honest with you, because quite frankly, I can point at two. One for how the game mechanic works, and one because, quite frankly, it just made me want to shoot my brains out. Out. The first one, the one because the game mechanic is Ghostbusters the video game. And I'm just going to go on record and say I hate any game that doesn't tell me when the um, checkpoints are. I don't care if I'm let's playing or not. If you don't tell me where the checkpoint is, you've just pissed me off. And knowing where the checkpoint is is helpful for us let's players because, quite frankly, then we know where we can safely end a video. Yeah. It's annoying as hell. But the game that I wanted to um, blow my brains out about was um, <laughs> was Crystal's Pony Tail. If you watch that video, you could tell I wasn't happy about playing it. If you watch the second video, you could really tell I was not happy about playing that. It was a little kid's game. It was a little kid's game. Why was it so bad? Because there was no way to lose. <laughs> okay. At the end of the day, I wanted to take that particular pony and take it to the glue factory. But with that said, I think that answered that question. So what's the next question got in store? Zelvos asks... Zelvos? Zevos? I, I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Have you ever thought about expanding your YouTube account to do more than just Let's Play videos? Things like little skits or game reviews? What, you mean like Ask Me Anythings? No, um, all kidding aside, um, not really. And reason being is I'm actually going to be launching another channel um, for my fursona, um, Cypher, here not too far away, but, um... So, and a lot of the little skits are going to be on that channel, along with rants, raves, and interviews. So, I really haven't had the feeling to um, put um, game reviews or skits or things like that on this channel. Even though there have been a couple things, um, narrations, etc., on this channel go down to the um, playlist that states non-let's play things and you will find them. Thanks. Have a nice day. Oh, speaking of nice day, next question! Holly Fox asks, 
Are kitty marks just for ponies? What kitty mark would you give me? Insert person here. Now I could be flippant here and um, say, yes, second question irrelevant, but in reality, um, some outside of the My Little Pony fandom, I guess, probably don't know what a cutie mark is. Well, a cutie mark is the mark that shows up on the flank. Um, you may notice on the avatar of me you see there, it's a, it's a um, bowling ball. Check my bowling scores, scores. You'll figure out why I picked that. But, um... <laughs> they, um... Represent your special talent, your hidden talent. And so, um... When you discover what it is, you get your cutie mark, and that's your destiny for the rest of your life. Kind of fatalistic, don't you think? For a little kid's show, especially. But, um... So... Are cutie marks just for ponies? Probably, but is do we all have a special talent? Hell yeah! As for you, Holly Fox, I would probably say your special talent is either coffee or an oatmeal chocolate chip or an oak, oatmeal raisin cookie because you know that big ass prop of yours is not a chocolate chip cookie. Have a nice day. Next question! My friend Flying Fire, hey, I didn't realize you were going to get in on this. Actually has two questions for me. If I had the time to do them, would I consider going other places to do my YouTube work if it really hit off? And if I had a chance to, who would I pair up with to show me more things to do on YouTube? Hmm, interesting. If I had the time to do them. I'm going to take a wild guess and say you mean like go to a recording studio to do it. The answer to that is probably no because it's actually a lot more comfortable sitting here at home playing video games and doing this, that, and the other. But if you're talking about like going to conventions and posting videos from said conventions, hey, hey been there, done that, sister. <laughs> but if I had the chance to, who would I pair up with to show me more things? Um, Let's see. Markiplier... Um, Yammy Mash. Heck, I'd probably even go... Oh, on maybe his best day, Wade. Um, sorry, Bob. I just... I, I, I can't make myself do it. But definitely Markiplier and Yammy Mash. I would love to have the chance to go and... do some more crazy stuff with. Um, but let's face it, who wouldn't... Uh, the only other person I could think of that I would want to do anything with on YouTube, and it's going to catch me a little bit of flack, is... Well, I don't know if it'll catch me any flack, but it... I would like to do more stuff with, um, Minfurs, um, the local fur group here, because, let's face it, you get fur suits, you got furries in general, but especially fursuiters, you can have a lot of fun. If that answers that question, I think I'll move on to the next. And if it doesn't, too bad! Yay! We're finally off of my YouTube channel. We're done with the grilling and let's get a little more esoteric. Metalwolf423 asks, Why do you think the brony fandom and the furry fandom don't get along? <laughs> Interesting. Isa Mystery. I really don't know. Um, the fun part is, I think, I think the Brony fandom suffers from the same thing that everybody, and this is going to get me into so much trouble considering that I am a, an admin in the Minnesota Bronies group. God damn it! But I think the Brony fandom suffers from what everybody else seems to suffer when it comes to the furry fandom, in that um, all the misconceptions about the furries. You know, I think, hey, guess what? The bronies don't... They don't get out much, okay? <laughs> or at least they don't think for themselves when it comes to mass media and perceptions because they're too busy dealing with their own um, war against them, as it were. And I just made a lot of enemies. I know it. Now, the furries... <laughs> You know, for the life of me, this is one of those that, again, I don't understand why. 
because, let's face it, My Little Pony fans like, like anthropomorphic animals. You like anthropomorphic animals, furries. This should be natural allies, but somehow it's not. <laughs> I, you know, Metal Wolf, I'm sorry. I just, I don't know. I think it's kind of funny, to be honest with you. It's definitely worth the entertainment value. Jeez! Smidgefist! Ask me a whole bunch of them! Crap! Okay, if I could choose, would I rather be a duck or a goose? I'm gonna answer that right now. Quacking up here. Would I take video requests for YouTube? You know, like where people ask me to do certain kind of YouTube videos. And... If I could restart my life almost like a video game and choose everything, like gender, eye color, skin color, etc., what would you change? No, you're not that bad at asking questions there, Smidge, so I'm gonna get after those last two, right? The answer to would I take video requests, it's kind of a mixed one. Would I take what game to play requests? Sure, sure, why not? If you got one, comment section, any of my videos, please, comment section. But as for what type of video to make, probably not. But the, um, <laughs> the second question is kind of giving me a little pause here. I know, furry pause, haha. <laughs> but, um, if I could restart my life almost like a video game and choose everything, like gender, eye color, skin color, etc., what would I change? You know, I could give you the cop-out answer and say, Nope, I like my life the way it is. But, um, if we're doing this like a video game, and I could remember everything that I had the f in the past, um, sure, why not? Um, see things from a different perspective. That'd be kind of cool. Um, I think I figured out this male side down pretty damn well. Um, I'd like, you know, I kind of know what it feels like, um, Sure, let's see what it's like to be, um, female. Why not? Um, hey, scientific mind is curious. Um, eye color? You know, sure, maybe. I don't know. Skin color? If we're talking ethnicity, um, sure, um, maybe come from the Asia region, the east somewhere, um, maybe Japan, I don't know. You know, it'd be kind of interesting to see it from a different perspective, I guess, you know? You can't really understand anyone until you walk a mile in their shoes. And, um, I... Ski Sharp asks, How did you get into both the Furries and the Bronies fandoms? One thing led to another? No, I'm serious. Um, <laughs> what happened was, I was actually... We'll start with the Bronies, because um, this is where it started. I was um, playing World of Warcraft, and we used to make fun of um, the bronies when they would come and attack the um, general chat. And so one day I just kind of was surfing YouTube, and <laughs> I stumbled on this video called um, Death Battle, Starscream vs. Rainbow Dash. I remember watching that video going, now, I don't much care for Transformers, I don't much care for, um, Starscream in general, but he better kick this Pride Pony's ass. <laughs> and, uh, at the end of it, when Rainbow Dash won, I was like, whoa, okay, let's see, uh, this sh show has obviously gotten the creators of this to take a look and give a nod, so it... You know what? I'm going to just watch an episode. It's on Netflix. I'm going to watch an episode. It's going to suck. I'm going to laugh at myself, and we're going to move on. I watched the first episode. It didn't suck. Now, it wasn't great, but it didn't suck. Second episode, I said, you know what? I'm going to watch another episode, because quite frankly, one of these is going to suck. I'm going to find the episode that sucks. I'm going to laugh at myself for being that hopeful, and then we'll move on with my life. Second episode didn't suck. Third episode didn't suck. Fourth episode didn't suck. Fifth episode didn't suck. Got to the end of the season. Okay, I'm... It didn't suck. Okay, I... I must have missed something because there has to be suck here. This is My Little Pony. It, 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 there has to be suck here. 
watch the season through again. The light bulb finally went off over my head. Oh shit. <laughs> hey, hey. I'm a brownie. Now, falling into the furries, though, now that's an interesting one because um, I never really would have found the furries if it wasn't for the bronies, which is ironic considering how much um, dislike the two groups have for one another. Um, it was Everfree 2013, and I was wandering around, hanging out, having some fun, and I saw um, something I hadn't seen in a long time. A fursuit. <gasps> It was a fursuit of a pony, of course, but it was still a fursuit. And I was like, <gasps> want. And so I went, want. Want this. Want this now. Want want to get involved in this. Want to get an Octavia Melody fursuit, and I was going to wander around Everfree and have a blast, etc. And so you know what I did? I wandered into, um, I got home, and I said, well, who has the fursuits? Furries! So, is there a local fur group in the... Back here in Minnesota, where I'm from? Oh, holy shit! There is! Men furs! Okay. Wander over. Hey, guys! Do you know who... Th me, me being a dopey... Me being dopey me, not knowing that there's... A war between the two, said, Hey, guys! I'm a brony! Do you know where I could get a fursuit? Hate! And so, I just went... You know what? Fuck you guys. I'm sticking around here. Went to my first fur meet. Met a lot of cool people. Had a lot more fun than I ever had at any other brony meets. And kind of realized that, hey, the furries are a better fit for me. Hmm. Game on. So, from that point on, I started calling myself a furry who just happens to like ponies. Um. <laughs> I hope that is a sufficient answer because I don't know what else to say after that. Now, normally I wouldn't take a question from the same guy twice, but considering that the question that he asked me previously was um, scavenged from a TMI Tuesday, but it was so good I had to keep it. Eric, who also happens to be the president of Minfers, is now going to kick my butt with this question, I get the feeling, because this is a long answer. What are the commonalities and differences of the brony and furry subcultures, and what do you believe the future will hold for both groups? And, do you believe existing as a figure in both groups has helped or hurt you? Eric, I thought we were friends. Mr. President, you know how to... <laughs> you know how to bust me up here. Oh god, this could be a 20 minute video in and of itself. Um, what are the commonalities and difference between the brony and furry subcultures? Well, besides the fact that one's based around a show, and one's based, as Uncle Kage once said, um, we are not fans of a show, but we are fans of each other, um, I really don't see much of a difference, considering that the, um, I mean, the bronies get a bit of a knock being, oh, you just like ponies. Well, yeah, we like ponies. We like anthropology ponies, but we also like, um, unicorn, pegasi, um, dragon, griffin, phoenix, <laughs> um, there are a lot of anthropomorphic animals in My Little Pony, so, uh, it's a nice launching point for those of us to jump ship from Brony to Furry. Now, the future... Um, the future, gosh, you know, I think, and I've said this at Fur Meets, and I will say it here, I think the brony um, subculture will be absorbed by the furry subculture. Um, I think that the brony fandom will be absorbed eventually. Once the show is canceled or is, you know, once it's taken off the air, it'll last a little bit. You'll have some conventions, I think, like BronyCon or Everfree, that um, will exist for a while after, but a lot of the smaller cons won't. I think, um, kind of like Star Trek did, it's kind of a Star Trek has kind of been absorbed into the geek culture and, as such, shown up at comic cons and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think, um, I think the um, 
brony culture will either be absorbed by the furries or by um, the geek culture in general. Um, I think the fur culture, uh, you know what? I, as only having been here for about a for about a year and finally comfortable with it, I can tell you, um, I think the future's bright, to be honest with you. I think awesome people plus awesome pastimes and being fans of each other as opposed to a, spe- a, pe- a specific show. Sorry, I cannot English. I thought, oh yeah, I cannot English right, wow. Um, the, um, <laughs> instead of being a fan of something localized that can be cancelled or taken away, I think the furry subculture is going to exist nicely. Now, here's one I think you're going to be shocked by. Do I believe existing as a figure in both groups has helped or hurt me? Actually, I believe it's actually hurt me. Um, The fun part is, I've actually had people at Brony Meets come up to me and say, you know the reason why you're an admin, right? No. No, I don't. It's because you're a furry. Oh, well, that's an interesting help. No, you don't get it. You see, furries, the only reason you were made an admin was because furries know how to handle drama. <sighs> you missed it by one word. You missed it by one word, doofus. The word is cause. We can cause drama. We don't handle it all that well. But, um, you know, I have gotten a lot of ribbing and a lot of dislike from some of the rank and file of the bronies, but guess what? They can't say anything because I'm in the leadership. Ha <laughs> ha! But the, um, it's kind of a fun aspect. Um, I think it's helped me in the, um, fur group because I've said it, you know, I actually said it at a meet that I'm trying that when the show finally, when the show finally dies, to give us bronies a plate, a soft place to land, to show the furries that we're not Satan. <laughs> so maybe it's helped me there, but it's kind of hurt me It's helped me with the furries at the end of the day, I guess. But it has hurt me with the rank-and-file brony, apparently. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag. Now, I could keep going on and on and on about the commonalities and differences between the brony and furry subcultures and all the rest of this question, and I may come back to that and do a longer video on this. But... With that being said, that here ends the AMA. As always, there are two dates in time they'll carve on your stone. Everyone knows what they mean. What's more important is the time that is known by the little dash there in between. Happy All Hallows Eve later on this month. Peace all. <laughs>